you know, this crazy Frenchman who went up and down the rivers carrying like 600 pounds of, of like pelts. That's Martin Gala. He's the hustler, the godfather, and we love him. He was in the heyday of snowboarding, you know, when he was first becoming a pro snowboarder, it was in the days of Andy Hetzel and Kemper snowboards. He was always like the crazy one, like most of the time he was the one always like go bigger than everyone. That was a straight mark and it doesn't always work. <laughs> it was cool, uh, my dad lived in Montreal downtown, so we grew up, uh, we just skateboard downtown Montreal in the back alleys and stuff like that. And my mom lived um, in Saint Jerome, so close to the snowboard resort. And uh, in the winter time, we used to um, put straps on our uh, skateboards and take off the trucks and go down the hill at the park. It was kind of outlaw in Quebec back in those days. Organized sport, we played hockey while we were still skating and stuff, but it's not, nobody tells you what to do. You do it your own way, you know? All the first snowboard ever made were made in my town beside my cousin's place. So he's all like, I'm all like, go knock at the door, ask them if we can have some boards. Company called uh, Nortec. Uh, Lofo used to work there, he's the guy who invented the high backs and everything, that was his, uh, his shop. After that, they giving me all the free snowboard. And I remember they give me a hundred dollar bill and they say, go have fun this weekend, Martin. I saw the movie Snowboarding in Exile with uh, Damien Sanders hitting the windlip. And after we saw that, we're all like, we're going, we're moving out west, we're gonna go hit the windlip. So me and uh, my friend Fat Pat, we bought a Maverick car, stylish car, and we hit the road. I think I was sharing a place with uh, KY at the time, and uh, we get a knock on our door or whatever, and it's like Martin Galan, his buddy Pat Van, and they'd literally driven across Canada in like 72 hours or something. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll just stay for like a week, man. <laughs> Two months later, he's still couch surfing. I just went up one afternoon with Eric Berger. We went up on Blackcomb and he shot a picture like this. And I opened the trans world and I was on the center fold. After that, the phone started ringing and it was Camper Snowboard. And they all like, hey, we want to sponsor you. Uh, you're going to do all the contests, this, that. And it all got started uh, real fast, just like that. He came here, he, he was still jibbing and would go back and do some uh, story with Igushi in Montreal doing some rail trip and after that come back here and towards I don't know the and it he changed his style to big mountain and that's when he kind of really take off and I mean at first it was like more balls and energy than it was talent or refinement but I think that switched over pretty quickly um, he adapted to the bigger mountains he adapted to the deeper snowpack and uh, you know he was logging a hundred days or plus a year and uh, within a few couple years, for sure, he was stepping up to some bigger and bigger stuff, doing really creative lines, and uh, it was pretty clear he was gonna he was gonna stay that way, keep going. In the mid '90s in Whistler, pretty much everyone was sponsored. You know, like it went crazy, but he was one of the first one to start getting paid. Thing in Canadian snowboarding, like he's a pioneer for sure. All I could say in English is like, where's the launch? Where's the launch? Calling it our launch ramp like we build in the back alley, you know? So it's all I was screaming, where's the launch? I just wanted to jump. I had no fear, you know, as young, let's uh, bring me the launch. I think I heard Martin before I ever saw him because there was a mad Frenchman behind me yelling, where the launch? He just grows on you so much and uh, everyone respected his riding. I mean, the guy charged, so like you can't, you can't not love him. I think that uh, Martin took a page out of the whiskey book when like if nobody's gonna do it for you, just do it yourself. We were younger, we wanted to see freestyle, you know, we were more in the mag dog. So I told my brother, hey, let's buy a motorhome and a video camera and let's go on the road and uh, we'll sell the footage to the Adventure Scope movie at the time. And we bought a computer to do the editing and uh, there it was, we, uh, we start making snowboard video called The Gathering. And we wanted to keep the, the gang tight, you know, and that's what it did for five years, The Gathering Collective. It gave us, all of us, work and it kept the whole gang for another five years in Whistler, you know, with, uh, with busy and uh, going by and having fun, you know. He really guided all these guys, you know, the JF Pelshas, the, the Mike Page, DCP, 
all that whole 418 crew in the, in the heyday of the 418, uh, he really kind of molded them and showed them how to ride big mountains and, and how to be safe in the big mountains. And uh, it was impressive, you know, and I obviously learned everything I, everything I know about the backcountry, I learned from Martin. But I think because of the gathering and Marte and O'Dowd and those guys, because of that movie, everybody like DCP and those guys are where they are today, you know? But it just seemed like every year he would just still produce a good video part and still produce these movies and do everything filming and pretty impressive to be able to do those two things together. I've always said that he's like a photographer's best friend because he, he knows when, if a, a motion shot's not going to work, he's going to put something down that the photographer's going to get something good out of. Hey surface man, I come up with you and when they build a jump, we go over there and I do a method man. Sick cover for sure man. There's only a few riders that that can can actually see what a photographer sees, and he'll know. He basically be like, "I'm gonna jump off here. I'm gonna do a method. You're gonna stand there, and it's gonna be sick." And it always is. He goes, wanders around, finds something to do, goes to a different crew, say, "Hey, hey photographer, man, come with me. I've got something sick." He grabs other people, photographer, and he goes to the next crew. You know, you see what he can do around that crew. He's like, "Hey, okay, I'll be doing this." You know, Martin is progressive, I could say. He's accepted because that's who he is, you know? And he's funny because people want to see a show at the same time, he'll give you a show. He's, he's going to talk to you guys, hey, you don't do this, you don't do this. And it's amazing. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a soap opera in the backcountry. He knows when it's time to be on it. And you know, sometimes I have heard him a couple of years, you know, ride probably like 20 times. It's like, oh yeah, my season's done, I got all my picture. You can learn a lot from him just because of, he's a really good teacher and he really like loves to show people what he knows. I think he's got an innate sense for what what's ahead of him on a hill. He has a really good ability to predict what he's going to face on the next turn. What stimulates me the most in snowboarding is um, doing a first descent, a cliff that's never been jumped before and you're at the bottom of the mountain and you imagine yourself coming down and you gotta record every single little rock, every turn and make your cliff and make it down to the mountain. He's sort of one of those guys who's the ultimate blend of freestyle and big mountain and um, likes, likes the challenge of riding terrain that's either unpredictable or always new and always ever changing. Hey, I'm gonna make three turns one, two, three, beside the next rock, I always count on my finger, it's gonna be my takeoff, I'm gonna jump that rock, I'm gonna land and I'm gonna make it down uh, on my feet, you know, and uh, that's what, that's what may still make me go out there till this day. This thing was always just to charge like craziest line and like the shit that you make it or you might not make it. You know, he gets into an area and he just doesn't mess around, he kind of he knows where the light's going and he knows how to pick lines out really well. Martin did it all on his own. He stayed at it regardless of anyone, you know, giving him money to do it. So, he, you know, he's a purist. He's, he's got this, he is the soul of what, you know, big mountain backcountry snowboarding is all about. Like, he's, he's the man. I think Martin is a free spirit, living the dream, man. And you always hear about him, story, crazy story, where he's been for two months, surfing. I think I came uh, from the best uh, snowboard uh, era. It was the beginning, it was go, 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 Rawr! you know, and that's how I grew up. That's what all these boys show me when I move out, out west. They didn't care about nothing, so I just follow their path. It's all it was since day one, and I think if I keep that mentality straight in there, I'll keep snowboarding and I'll stay young for the rest of my life. You must love it. And he likes the adventure, so that's amazing to keep, to keep going that, uh, keep going out there like that. It's, it takes a toll on you. And uh, I, I think it's just so good to hear that he's still doing it. He still loves riding. It's an inspiration to me. You know, guys like that keep me riding too. I think everything kind of ties back to Martin's attitude. I mean, he's a, he's a kid at heart with just decades of experience. Like, it's pretty cool that He's done something that, you know, people remember always in a sport we love, you know. It's a pretty cool thing, man. Huge respect for every single French Canadian out there, man, but they, they all they all owe him for sure for, for leading the way. The way he decides his life, I think, is I will do whatever I want 
for all my life. I'm very happy to, uh, to be here in BC and um, I've been uh, collecting some logs for years and years with my brother and uh, we're about to put up a little log cabin so that'll be a busy uh, summer project. And um, yes, I'm pretty much the same uh, little kid. <laughs> I think I think all of us, the snowboarders, we all got frozen in time from sitting on that cold chair for so many years. 